After a nine month break from Why I Love, I'm back to tell you about the best character in all of Radiant. Now, people have been complaining that only 50-ish percent of their audience are subscribed when only 3% of mine is, so please subscribe if you think you can put up with me. This is the story of a young woman fighting prejudice, sabotage, and her own training to become a knight the people of Merlin can look up to. Someone who will protect everyone against all odds and always fight for her country. This is the story of Okaho. Only three? Then... Dine! <laughs> After losing Hamlin and Rumbletown, Seth travels to Koshley and Merlin in search for clues about Radiant. Quickly after arriving, Seth pairs up with a young knight sorcerer candidate named Okaho. Under the leadership of Lord Brangora, who believes any one soldier is useless, but together the knight sorcerers can conquer any nemeses. Okaho follows orders in hopes of one day becoming a full-fledged knight sorcerer. Not long after they meet, a spectral nemesis appears terrorizing a nearby farm and Seth gets his first look at the knight sorcerers in action. Lord Brangora leads the vanguard to battle using a spell called Gasoni, which allows him to communicate and give orders to his knights. These specters are strange, however. No Fantasia seems to affect them. However, believing in his training, Lord Brangora orders the recruits to attack the nemesis despite the farmland that lies unprotected beneath them. Seth demands that they stop wasting energy when all they're doing is hurting the land, and Oko refuses to disobey orders. Seth busts out the I'm a Shonen Protagonist handbook and explains just how important breaking the rules are if it means you do the right thing, and Oko absorbs all the surrounding Fantasia, destroying the specter. While being scolded by Lord Brangora for breaking formation, Queen Bodica arrives to thank the brave knight sorcerers for facing the dangerous nemesis, specifically taking note of how well Okaho performed. We learn from the nearby farmers that Adulahan has been riding the night before a specter attacks. The people believe it to be a bringer of wrath and destruction. Meli joins the knight sorcerer candidates to train her offensive magic and helps Okaho out on missions. Seth, in the meantime, is infiltrating the castle to learn all he can about Radiant and to potentially steal a memory stone for Grimm. He finds himself deep below the castle where he meets a fellow sorcerer who resembles him and Peodone. His name is Diabol and he has been creating the spectral nemesis using a magical projection of a real nemesis he keeps locked away. Diabol believes Seth to be part of Peodone's plan to capture him, so he locks Seth in with the nemesis and projects both of them as specters. Back in the sky with the knight sorcerers, Okaho and Meli recognize Seth and once again betray orders to stop the knights from attacking him. Seth escapes with his life just barely intact, and the queen summons the disobedient knights to her chambers. After Seth escaped, the specter vanished, leaving many worried they would return, and their trust of the knight sorcerers is diminishing. Mordred, a fellow knight and childhood friend of Okaho's, says he believes Lord Brangor's leadership is why the specter got away. In saying so, Queen Bodica decides to hand over the reins to Lord Degullus, the Golden Knight, to restore honor to the Night Sorcerers. Okay, sidebar, Lord Degullus is absolutely hilarious, and if you disagree, you're just wrong. Okay, thanks. On their first mission with Lord Degullus, they encounter a normal nemesis, which he quickly defeats in one attack. However, in the distance, a much larger nemesis appears, and Lord Degullus commands his knights to defeat it before Brangora can, as some sort of contest. All the knights fly off, leaving Okoho and Meli behind. Oko just can't shake the bad feeling the nemesis corpse is giving her. Right then, the body splits into a dozen echoes, and only Okoho and Meli are around to stop them. Okaho uses her Gizoni to see through Dracoon's eyes, but can't stop all the echoes on her own. She calls for help, but the other knights are just too far away to hear her. It's here where we see the kind of person Okaho really is. Even though she thinks the situation is hopeless, she unleashes her magic to control all of the other knights in a way that not even Lord Brangora can. I have to act, because the knight sorcerer I want to become is the kind who protects the people. I won't be a coward who ignores someone suffering because of an order. I'll save every life I can, even if I'm giving up my shot at getting ordained. Gasoni!
After saving the people, Okoho's Kasoni wears off, leaving everyone affected, dazed, and confused about what just happened. Many of them weren't even using Kasoni to begin with. This display of power is the final bit that Lord Brangora needed to doubt if Okoho is truly who he thinks she is. Many of our characters believe someone is betraying Koshli and Merlin by summoning the Spectral Nemesis, and Lord Brangora begins to follow Okoho to see if she is one of the traitors. Melly and Doc tail him and discover both that Oko is summoning the Spectres and that Brangora is going to make an attempt on her life. By Merlin, I will ensure that you come to regret what you've done. The locals' reports about the Dulahan were in reference to Okoho. Because of her cloak covering her head and her skull knee guards, she resembles the headless Fae. Seth, Melly, and Brangora fight to stop her, Seth takes Oko out, and we learn what her infection really is. She has a small mark on her neck that when pressed, she becomes their puppet. Luckily, Merlin is very uptight and secretive about their curses, so whoever knows about Oko's infection is the real traitor. What's wrong with you? We're comrades! Every day we fight for Kavandir. Every day we risk our lives to protect the people here! I'm sorry. To cover his own ass, Mordred says the faithful the Hermit only serve the Queen. So who is really the traitor if Mordred is following the Queen's orders? The day of the ordination has arrived. All of the Night Sorcerer candidates assemble before the Queen to see if any of the Great Lords will welcome them as their successor. But... Due to her reputation, none of the lords believe it a good idea to take Oko on as their successor. We have duties at home, people to govern, fiefdoms to protect, and more. All that we've built for ourselves would be threatened should we take on such an untamable, unreliable successor. Okoho accuses the Queen of summoning specters and reveals the faithful of the Hermit. She uses Gisoni to stop any guards from throwing her out and demands that the Queen reveal the traitors within the castle. Lord Degullus attacks Okoho to protect his secrets, but is surprisingly stopped by Lord Brangora. Lord Brangora is a proud knight sorcerer who will oppose anyone, even the Queen, if they are against the land and its people. However, right as the people learn of the unrest in the castle, the Inquisition attacked to take control of Kavandir. An invasion! Ironically enough, a war is just what the Night Sorcerers needed to band together to protect their nation. Meanwhile, the Inquisition wishes to enslave as many sorcerers as possible based off lies they'll tell the public later. You know, glory to Bohm and all of that. The battle seems one-sided at first, but the merchant barons have supplied the Inquisition with a weapon to cancel out Fantasia. Oko informs the lords of this weapon, but they doubt her and continue attacking. Mordred lures Sagarmor and Lord Degullus to the merchant barons, but is followed by Okoho. After capturing her, Mordred and his father reveal their plan to conquer Kavandir and enslave all of its sorcerers. Sagramor and Lord Degullus fight the merchant barons and Mordred. And in the only part of Radiant's writing I don't like, Sagramor spares Mordred's life, but is slain immediately. Mordred stabs Dracoon and orders Okoho to throw herself off the airship to her death. Dracoon frees Oko from her curse and she uses Gisoni to control Mordred. They both cut down the merchant barons as fast as they can. As the war comes to a climax, Seth, Melly, and Oko lay their beliefs on the battlefield and remind us just what makes Radiant the best shonen out right now. But sooner or later, we'll break free of you! Funny thing about the infected, we're all survivors! You could never understand what that means! But whether you accept us or not, we are human! With their Gasoni link, Mordred is forced to experience the emotions of pain and loss everyone around him has been subjected to. The Inquisition destroy Culture Forest and kill Murr's wife. The queen breaks down, but is literally slapped to her senses by Oko, and they stop the Fantasia vacuum. She not only talks the queen to her senses, but also saves Seth from his inner darkness in order to save the land from Murden's wrath. Because of her dedication to the people, Queen Bodica names Oko as her heir. 
but tells her to explore the world like she never could. So far, I've only done why I love episodes on characters once they've completely finished their story, whether that means to death or to the end of the series. But for months I've been trying to think of another character do like Lavi or Gajiel, but I couldn't get how amazing Radiant Season 2 is out of my head, so I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you.